following is an exclusive presentation of WDAY Sports, your leader for live local sports coverage. Since late August, every football team in North Dakota has had one dream, to make it to the Fargo Dome in November to win a state title. Today, eight teams have a chance to realize that dream. Randy Vegan and Central Valley have spent 25 years trying to get to a state title game. He faces Dan Imdike and a title-tested Linton Lion Tiger team. Today, the dreaming stops, and for one team, a season of dreams becomes reality. The nine-man championship is next. live inside the House of Champions. Today, the Fargo Dome hosting Dakota Bowl 1999. Four teams will be lucky enough and good enough to end the year with a win and a state championship. Good afternoon, everyone. Dana Mock, Pat Sweeney, Steve Hallstrom, and our entire technical crew with you for two championship games today. Game number one, the nine-man championship between Central Valley and the Linton Lion Tigers. And when you talk about Valiant football, you begin with number two, Kyle Irie. Kyle Irie, Mr. Everything for this Valiant football team. And last week's semifinal win over to Rockford Cheyenne kind of typified his season. Irie had two long touchdown runs, passed for another touchdown, passed for 100-some yards. Also returns kicks and punts and he had two interceptions on defense last week other than that he doesn't help this team a lot yeah, it's nine-man football he plays right. every position if possible for linton they also have a playmaker his name is Justin Jokum. Steve Hallstrom with that report today. He's our sideline reporter. Steve? Well, Dana, Justin Jokum isn't a guy that'll scare the daylights out of you at your first look, but it's a different story when the ball is snapped. This coach says that he's a little bit of a bowling ball, a little bit of a sprinter, and a little bit of a dancer all wrapped up in one. And on the goal line, they'll flex him out and try to use his pass receiving abilities. He's a man of many talents, and they will all be tested against a Valiant's defense that has got better and better as the year went on. Dana, Pat, it looks like it's going to be a great game. We're looking forward to it. Back up to you. Championship football today and tomorrow here in the Fargo Dome. Today's nine-man championship game is brought to you by your local Jeep dealers. Back with the kickoff of Dakota Bowl 99. Next on the ABC Dakota Sports Network. The 1999 Dakota Bowl, featuring the nine-man championship between the Central Valley Valiants and the Linton Lions, and the Class A championship between the Carrington Cardinals and the Stanley Blue Jays, is being brought to you by Farnham Snappa Auto Parts, Stop and Go, Pella Windows and Doors, Subway, Your Jeep Dealers, Norwest Bank, American Dairy Association, Gateway Building Systems, Best Western Doublewood Inn, The Forum, I-29 Internet Services, Carrington Merchants, and Buxton Reynolds Merchants. lineups have been made for the nine-man championship that's Central Valley in blue the Linton Lion Tigers will be wearing white uniforms with gold pants Randy Vegan head coach of the Valiants 25 years of service walking the sidelines and this is his first state championship game that is Dan Imdike, the head coach of the Lion Tigers this is Linton's sixth championship game. Coach Imdike has two championships under his belt, 1980 and 1990. In fact, the Lions have missed the playoffs just three times since 1979. The matchup, both teams are 10 and one. Both teams love to run the football. Both teams score near 30 points a game. And the Linton Lion Tiger defense is awfully impressive, averaging six points a game. In fact, that defense has five shutouts in its 11 games. And four of those in succession. 
keys to the game, according to Coach Randy Vegan. His offense needs to be efficient. They need to tackle, wrap up, and not give ball carriers yards after contact, and play mentally tough. For Coach Imdike, a ball control offense. In other words, keep it out of Kyle Irie's hands, contain Mr. Irie, and play good defense. That's something that Linton has done all year long. Billy Ledigy gets Dakota Bowl 99 underway with a squib kick. And the ball will go out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Flags will fly. And Linton will get some pretty good field position to begin the Dakota Bowl 1999. On offense for Linton, quarterback is Levi Jangula. Justin Jokum is the running back. He has more than 1,000 yards on the year. The offensive line averaging 171 pounds. Huber, Kramer, Noel, Ibach, and Waylon Olhauser. In nine-man football, most of the time the offensive line isn't big, but they're cat quick. Jokum, first carry of the game across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Brought down by Jerry Olson of Central Valley. Olson, a sophomore on that defensive line, filling in for the injured Dan Fugelstein. There you see the rest of the Valiants up front. Yerke, Sundin, Olson, Irie, Novacek, and Wazlin make up the linebackers in secondary. Here's the big fullback. Aaron Nelson jammed up inside. I don't know if he got to the first down. He needed about two yards. And the officiating crew will mark him short of the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and about a foot. High formation again for Jangula. Quarterback sneak. Stopped by Central Valley, but he may have inched the ball across the 45-yard line. Lonnie Olson was quick to cut in there, but it will be a first down for the Linton, Hazelton, Moffat, Braddock, Lion Tigers. But I think to save a lot of time today, we'll just say Linton. It was always the Linton Lions, and it was always the Hazelton Tigers. So when they consolidated in the 1980s, they kept the two big school nicknames. So it's Linton, HMB, Lion Tigers. New set of downs for Jangula and company. Jokum, left side, three yards. Tackled by number 34, Lonnie Olson. We'll be saying Olsen's name a lot today. 17 solo tackles, 25 assists on the year, and you see the numbers for Justin Jokum. Second down. Jangula to the air for the first time. Gets out of the pocket, has some room, and he gets close to the first down, a pickup of about seven. Well, we saw it on the keys to the game for Central Valley. Number two was tackle, and three guys had a shot at Levi Jangula here, but Jangula doing a great job of scrambling out of trouble and getting a nice gain out of it. Breaking about three tackles will bring up a third down and short again. This is Jokum outside. First down. Linton. Tackled on the play by number four, safety Darren Novacek. Jokum is so dangerous in the open field. They just sealed off the outside for him, and Jokum just had plenty of room to maneuver for the first down. And Linton threatening here with 9.13 to go. Never a good sign when your safety is the first one to make a tackle. Pitch play, Jokum looks inside, stays outside, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and he's hammered by several Valiants. Leading the way, number two, Kyle Irie. Central Valley stood up on defense and was pointing in the Lion backfield, thinking that 
Linton may have moved offensively, but no flags on the play. The officiating crew today from Oaks, North Dakota, John Muckenhern, Don Miller, Brett Gibbs, and Chad Aberly. Second down and 10, little counter. Jokum, not much room, maybe one. On the bottom of the play is Solomon Bierke. On the top of the play is number 32, Jerry Olson. First difficult situation facing the Lion Tigers. Third down and we'll call it nine. Jangula to the air. Going deep. And it's complete down to the 15-yard line. That's number 82 wide receiver Ben Renz. The big play man on the outside for Linton. Renz is the big play guy, averaging about 38 yards a catch. He had position on the defensive back. Nice protection by Linton yep. to give Jangu the time to set up. Renz has good position on most people. He's six foot three. Jangula keeps it himself. Now looks complete to the big fullback, and he fights his way into the end zone. Aaron Nelson scoring the first touchdown of Dakota Bowl 99. and will try for two. They do not kick after touchdown. I think it's illegal in nine, man. I'm not <laughs> sure, but nobody really kicks PATs anymore. They just rather go for it. Uh oh, look at this. The pitch to Kuhn. Touchdown, excuse me, complete for the two-point conversion. That's number 86, tight end Wade Huber. The two-point conversion is good, and the Lion Tigers take an eight-nothing lead over Central Valley. You're watching Dakota Bowl 99 on the ABC Dakota Sports Network. It's the end of the week. Get into Subway on Sunday. We're ready to eat. Sunday at Subway, enjoy two regular foot-long sandwiches for only $6.99. Ooh, temptation. Craving steak and cheese, seafood, spicy meatball, or zesty chicken? Subway piles the fixin's high. All day Sunday, get any two regular foot-long sandwiches, just $6.99. Day Sunday, only at Subway. Prices and participation may vary. We keep a man running. We keep a man running. At Farnham's Napa Auto Parts, we keep America running with the best service from the most experienced parts people in the business and the value of quality Napa parts and accessories. Cut through the night with laser blue headlights as low as $9.99. Available now at Napa Auto Parts. We keep a man running. One possession, one touchdown for Linton, and the Lion Tigers lead Central Valley by a score of eight to nothing. Ben Renz will boot it away for Linton. There's Aaron Nelson getting wide open for the touchdown, and it's a squibber. It goes out of bounds. I don't know if anyone ever touched it or had possession. Flags fly as the ball goes out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. That is a live ball, but Linton could not come up with it. Here's another look at the TD. Jangula rolling out of the pocket and finding his fullback. And look at the strength oh. of Aaron Nelson there. Andy Wasling, no match in terms of size on that matchup. Randy Vigan and company will try and match the production of Linton. Kyle Irie on offense for the first time. I formation. Handoff, Danny Showland, a gain of one. Tackle on the play by number 66. That's the nose guard, Jess Melbrandt.
Starting lineups for Central Valley brought to you by State Bank of Fargo, Moorhead and West Fargo. Irie, Olson, Sholin, and Avacic. The boys up front go 190 on the average. Bierke, Adams, Johnson, Ledigi, and Kurt Hong. Sholin again this time trying to get outside. He's horse collared, but he breaks it. At least one tackle, but not the second. Lee Nagel, number 30, up from his linebacker position to make sure that Sholin goes nowhere. Wade Huber was the first guy to get a crack at him right here, 86. Sholin got away there, but as you see, he was in deep trouble as Lee Nagel followed up with help from Jerry Kuhn. Third down and long. Irie will go to the air. Going deep. Intended for Saul Bierke, but it's broken up by number 80. Dustin Kurtz. So the Valiants will have to kick it away. Good coverage on that play by the Lion Tigers. Bierke and Kurtz had quite a battle back there, and Kyle just kind of threw it up, hoping it would get there, and it was a little underthrown, actually. Aaron Sundin will boot it away from his own 25-yard line. End over end kick. J.J. Kuhn comes up and fields it at his 40, has a couple of yards across the 45 to the 46. Danny Sholin and Andy Wazlin make the stop. And Linton has excellent field position again. A big defensive stand there for Linton, fresh off the touchdown. A lot of confidence on this Lion Tiger team right now, shutting down this high-powered Central Valley offense on the first series. And as you say, Dana, great shape here at the 46-yard line. We're changing footballs back and forth today. Linton, one of the few teams probably in America that still uses the old rubber football. This is something that Coach Indyke got from Raleigh Greeno. Jangula to the fullback. Struggling to the, about a nine-yard game. Aaron Nelson, the big 6'3", 195-pound senior. We talk a lot about Justin Jokum, but who's the guy making all the yards in the DDs early in this game? It's the fullback. We saw Aaron Nelson pull over a defensive back on that first touchdown of the game, and he's carrying people with him on this play on the ground. He's a fullback and goes 195. Central Valley has an offensive lineman that weighs about 150 pounds. Second down and two. This is Jokum on the toss. Gets to the 45-yard line, and I think he'll be just a shade shy of the first down marker. Billy Ledigy tripping him up, number 54. Randy Vegan says that the Valiants have a bend but don't break defense. They'll give up some yards. But when it gets down into the red zone inside the 20-yard line, that defense normally comes up with some type of big play. In fact, in the regular season and postseason so far, they've given up two touchdowns in the first quarter. First down carry for Justin Jokum. So Linton becoming just the second team to score on the Valiants in the first quarter. In fact, last week, Central Valley uh, opened the scoring in their semifinal against New Rockford Cheyenne with Lonnie Olson returning a, an interception for a long touchdown. First and 10, Jangy the bobbles the snap, gets it back, hands to Yoakum, is down to the 40. Bottom of the pile is number eight, Solomon Bierke. Four thirty-five to go, first quarter. Linton leading Central Valley for the nine-man championship by a score of eight to nothing, and the Lion Tigers are driving. Option football. Jangula turns it up. Gains maybe four. Andy Wazlin on the bottom of the pile. Saul Bjerke from his safety position. Or linebacker also tripping him up. It's 
one thing that Coach Ibdike is getting what he wants, a ball control offense, chewing up the clock here. We're inside the four minute mark. Third down and five, Jokum stopped, nowhere to go. Maybe a gain of a half yard will bring up a fourth down for Linton. Let's go down to sideline reporter Steve Hallstrom. Steve? Well, guys, one of the things that Coach Randy Vegan has been talking to his guys about on the sidelines is that Linton seems to be doing most of its damage on the right side of the Valiant's defense. Says guys on the far side of the field, at least from where we're standing, on the far side of the field need to toughen up. We'll see if Linton keeps going back to their left. Fourth down and four. Linton will go for it. Jangula, screen pass. Complete to Olhauser. He's got some room. A first down inside the 25. Now inside the 20, down to the 17. Olhauser's fourth reception of the year. A big one here in the title game. Well, a gutsy call there. And they had him wide open. Olhauser in the clear, and for a while it looked as if Nick Adams might catch up with him, but Olhauser just turns on a little speed there and winds up inside the 20. First and 10 at the 23. Jangula going to the end zone, picked off by Kyle Irie. Tackled on the play, but the Valiant D comes up big. Bend, but don't break to perfection. We said at the top of the show, if Irie doesn't hurt you offensively, it can hurt you defensively. His third interception in two weeks. Played that one perfectly. He had his eye on the ball, and he had position on the receiver. So it was just a matter of making the catch and getting out of that deep hole. Intended for Ben Renz again, and I think Irie kind of suckered Jangula into throwing that one, kind of laid off, knowing he could close in a hurry. So the Valiants dodged a bullet. First and 10 at their own 18-yard line. Outside, Olsen can't quite crack the 20-yard line. That's Jokum making the stop with some help from his friends. Lonnie Olsen is probably considered the fullback in this offense. Good blocker, but he has had a string of bad luck with some injuries. Stinger to the neck, a kneecap problem. But still, he's run for more than 700 yards this year. Two-yard gain, second and eight. Sholin in motion. Irie gives to Olsen. Gain of one. Aaron Nelson making the stop. Randy Vegan, graduate of Hatton High School in Mayville State. His two sons, of course, familiar to NDSU fans. His oldest son, Brent, a graduate assistant here with the Bison, and Brooks, a junior at NDSU. His daughter is a sophomore and a statistician at Central Valley. Third down, seven. Irie's going to run it. Flag comes down as Irie's tackled at about the 24-yard line. Holding on the Valiants. That, I'm sure, will be declined, and the Valiants will be forced to punt. It is declined. So Aaron Sundin will kick it away again, averaging 26.4 yards of boot this year. He stands at his own 13. Good snap, good spiraling kick. J.J. Kuhn bobbles it. Now reverses his field, and he's got a wedge set up. Runs into his own man, then he's brought down by Solomon Bierke, but inside Valiant territory at the 47-yard line. 1.15 to play first quarter. The Lion Tigers lead the Valiants by a score of 8 to nothing. And we'll be back to the Dakota Dome after this. With our most advanced four-wheel drive system ever, Quadra Drive, Jeep Grand Cherokee goes where you could encounter anything. So we test it for anything. 
check one out at your Jeep dealer. A time for us, someday they'll be when chains are torn by courage born of a love that's free. A time when dreams so long denied. Only Pella Windows offers the Between the Glass feature, which keeps your shades protected from dust, dirt, and other unwanted elements. Pella, viewed to be the best. First quarter of the nine-man championship, Linton leading Central Valley 8 to nothing. Stay tuned at halftime for the KFC Halftime Report with Steve Hallstrom. We'll be chatting with a couple of members from the Metro Area Tournament Committee, Ed Lockwood and Kurt Jones. That's the KFC Halftime Report with Steve Hallstrom. Third possession of the game for the Linton Lion Tigers. Possession one, resulting in a touchdown. Possession two, an interception by Kyle Irie. Nelson the fullback for a couple. Lonnie Olson is there, Nick Adams is there. Both of these teams coming in with one loss. Linton, in fact, uh, lost in the regular season finale to Turtle Lake, but as Dan Imdike says, nothing wrong with a loss unless you're eliminated. That's right. Do it in the regular season. Don't do it in the postseason. Jangula will turn it up and gain maybe two. Solomon Bierke on the stop. Central Valley's only loss was a regular season loss to AEEMO. 14-12 was the final. Central Val Valley uh, gets a little revenge in the postseason, beating AEEMO by a score of six to nothing. That game went to overtime. Third and six now. Jangula, quarterback draw. No siree. Nick Adams, the nose guard. Johnny on the spot will bring up a fourth down for Linton. Boy, Central Valley has to be pumped after holding the fullback to a short gain and then stopping him there on, on that play, bringing up fourth down as we head to the second quarter. We've played one quarter. The Lion Tigers lead the Valiants by a score of eight to nothing. Community Scholarship Fund. This year, celebrating $1 million in scholarship awards and support to students and schools across the region. We want you to dream a dream. That's why your Community Norwest store is awarding $1,000 scholarships again this year. Pick up an application today. Norwest Community Scholarship winners are selected by an independent panel of judges. Winners must attend a school in their home area. Dream a dream. Dream a big dream. At Norwest, we're with you at home, at school, or on the Diderot Trail. The Norwest Community Scholarship Fund, celebrating $1 million in support for students and schools throughout the region. Kelly Stone, weekday mornings on First News. At the end of the game, we'll choose the American Dairy Player of the Game, brought to you by the American Dairy Association, on behalf of your local dairy farmers who ask, got milk? We switch sides, we go to the second quarter. Lion Tigers leading the Valiants by a score of eight to nothing, and Linton forced to punt it away. J.J. Kuhn standing at his 42-yard line. Good snap, end over end kick. Kyle Irie calls for the fair catch at his own 19 yard line. All after scoring 40 points in its playoff win over New Rockford Cheyenne last week, the Central Valley Valiants struggling a little on offense today, Pat. Yeah, they went one, two, three kick on the first series and then they got the uh, big interception by Kyle Irie right in front of the goal line. And couldn't sustain the ensuing drive. So defense has been their highlight. 
You mentioned that AEMO game. It's hard to believe anyone shut out Irie and the Valiant offense for four full quarters, but that's just what happened. And see what happens in quarter two here. Here's Olsen breaking outside, and he has some room. Foot race goes by Jokum. Knocked out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Big play, Central Valley. It's first big play of the game. Well, we mentioned last week, Olsen ran an interception back for a touchdown, so he's got some speed, and once he got to the outside, it was just a matter of who's going to catch him. Justin Jokum was the guy who had to collar him down, and he just <laughs> didn't even take him down. He just forced him out. Olsen's 5'11 and 180, a senior fullback. They mark the ball to 49 of Linton. This is Danny Sholin upended after a gain of maybe one. Making the stop for Linton, number 86. Wade Huber. Wade Huber. 170 pounder, senior. Second and nine. Option football. Irie turns it up. Gains one, maybe two. Tackled by Nick Eibach, number 50. Coach Vegan says that Kyle Irie needs to get off to a good start throwing to continue that through the game. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the Valiants have thrown once in this ballgame. They've game thrown too. once, have yet to make a completion. And if you're, if you're Linton, I'm not sure you want Central Valley in a throwing situation. Third and eight, here's another throwing situation. Irie will run it. Flag. Knocked out of bounds. 39 yard line, but yes, there is a flag on the play. Thrown right on the line of scrimmage on the near side. What do we have? Coach yeah. Vegan wants to know what's going on. Procedure against Central Valley. Linton's got a choice here. Accept the penalty, move him back, or decline it. It would be fourth down. And the Lion Tigers appear to be accepting the penalty. They decline it. It would be fourth down in about two. So they're going to back him up. And apparently, some pretty good coverage downfield. I took the Linton. shot there, yeah. Lee Nagel, one of the defenders, getting a lick on him. Even with the flag down, you got to keep playing. Third down and about 13 now. I read a throw. Forced out of the pocket, looking for the screen, nearly picked off. Intended for Solomon Bierke, but couldn't find him in the mess in the middle. So the Valiants will kick it away again. Everyone was well covered. Linton had one man chasing Irie, and the rest of the defensive linemen just kind of stayed with their men in the middle, and that clogged things up. The screen really never developed. Sundin from his 37 will boot it away. Spiraling kick, heading for the corner. Kuhn will let it go. Now he scoops it up at the 12. Nearly falls and is tackled by Danny Sholin at the 13 yard line. Good boot for Central Valley. The Linton Lion Tigers will have a lot of green Astro turf in front of them. Hey, Levi Jangula, senior quarterback for Linton, heads to the field. Eight touchdowns rushing this year, 12 touchdowns passing. A lefty with a nice touch. Renz in motion. Fullback Nelson. Tackled by Solomon Bierke after a gain of about three. We're saying Solomon Bierke's name a lot. Solomon Bierke, one of the seniors on this team, and that's one of the things that uh, Coach Vegan has been real pleased with is how the seniors have helped respond 
after last year's season ending loss in the semifinal round they lost only one game and it was to Hatton Finley Sharon in the semis and the coaches have reminded the players about that loss before every single game this year so maybe a little motivation by fear huh? but it's worked yep looks like we're ready now okay second and seven misdirection choke him tracked down from behind by Lonnie Olson nobody stopped Lonnie Olson he got right in there and had a free shot at him and if he couldn't stop him you had looks like uh, Jerry Olson there too the sophomore lineman third down seven Angula will throw. Forced out of the pocket. Tackled from behind. Number 52, nose guard Nick Adams. And the Lion Tigers will have to boot it away. Well, on defense, Central Valley doesn't have many complaints here after giving up the first touchdown. They've played real well. And it's just the offense that needs a kickstart. Who would have thought that the uh, Lion Tigers would be out passing the Valiants at this point, but Central Valley has yet to complete a pass and punting time again here for Lip. Kuhn inside his own five yard line. End over end kick to Irie. Fields it at the 45. Tripped up by number 19. That's the quarterback, Levi Jangula. But look at the Valiants now with excellent field position. 8-14 to play in the first half. Lion Tigers lead the Valiants by a score of eight to nothing. Man. Want strong bones? Calcium may help prevent osteoporosis. Gateway Building Systems, the area's leader in commercial and ag building since 1961, teams up with Butler Manufacturing to bring you quality pre-engineered buildings with smart looks and rugged durability. And for special industrial specifications, Gateway delivers. Their designers, construction managers, site planners, and craftsmen will bring your project in on schedule and on budget. Gateway Building Systems. Quality, integrity, dependability, diversity. Building a commitment to you. A reminder, stay tuned for the KFC Halftime Report with sideline reporter Steve Hallstrom. 8.14 to play, second quarter. Linton leading Central Valley by a score of 8 to nothing. Valiant's now with some excellent field position. You know, the Fargo Dome is the goal of every high school team in the state, but you'll be hard-pressed to find anyone on the Central Valley team, players and coaches alike, that has anything good to say about this building. They do not like playing in here. They think it is too hot and it wears on a team. And during that time out, Kyle Airy, I wonder if he got shaken up on that hit he took on the sidelines earlier because he was moving slowly and doubled over in the huddle a couple of times. We'll keep an eye on that. Olsen with the one yard carry for the Valiants brings up a second down and nine. But sooner or later you have to realize to win a state championship you're going to play in this building. Mm -hmm. You better get used to it. <laughs> Irie's going to throw. Sholin wide open. First down and maybe more to the 15. Cuts it back again. Knocked out of bounds at the 10 by Waylon Olhauser. He doesn't catch many, but when he does, they're big. Was that Danny Scholland or Fred Astaire? Look at the footwork. Making the catch in the open field. Down goes one man. Got by another, but the third man finally caught up to him. And here's that shot that Kyle Irie took in the first quarter as he was running out of bounds. A flag had been thrown on this play. Oh. Oh. No, this was not the play. This was. That's the punt return, but he kind of hyper That was the punt return. 
hyperextended his knee there a little bit, but he seems to be fine. Sholin cuts it inside, goes outside, and he's called out of bounds at about the one-foot line. He's saying he got the ball inside the pylon, but the official was right there on the play. We'll take another look at it here. Yeah, good blocking by the Valiants that a time. A lot of good oh, blocks. Irie. Big one there from the quarterback, Irie. Let's see, did he get it in? Well, I think he did. I think he did, too. Everybody watches <laughs> NFL games, and they, don't, they all do that. Yep. He That's did. a touchdown. That's a good play by Danny Sholin. But it doesn't count. <laughs> I'll have to do it again. No replay rule here. Great camera work by our guys. Valiant's trying to get on the board here for the first time. Irie QB sneak, touchdown, Central Valley. Irie's sixth rushing touchdown of the year. And the Valiants will try for two in the tie. Cole House backfield. Sholin, second back through. Fighting. Yes, they convert the two-point conversion to tie the game at eight. Sholin actually finds the end zone twice, but just gets credit for two points and not six. We're tied at eight. 7.07 to play in the first half. You're watching the Dakota Bowl on the ABC Dakota Sports Network. For your next banquet, convention, or meeting, don't overlook the Doublewood Inn of Fargo for affordable pricing and top-of-the-line accommodations. A total of 14,700 square feet of flexible meeting space can accommodate groups of 12 to 1,200. The Woodland Square Complex features 11-foot high ceilings, a large dance floor, and garage door for convenient loading and unloading. The indoor pool, whirlpool, and sauna area, casino lounge, and Dakota Grill restaurant will make your stay enjoyable. Fargo's premier choice for meeting planners. The Doublewood Inn, Fargo. This end zone in the actual huddle of today's game. Let's listen in. All right, you guys. Last week, we had good coverage in the forum. So, what are we going to do? We want a good game. Yeah! yeah! And why do we want a good game? So they can read about us in the forum. Yeah! yeah! Let's give them something to read about. Yeah! Sports in the forum. This game looks great on paper. Kyle Irie, Randy Vegan, Solomon Bierke, the Valiants celebrating their first touchdown of Dakota Bowl 99, and it ties the game with Linton at eight. Billy Ledigy will boot it away for Central Valley. Brent Weber and J.J. Kuhn standing deep for Linton. It's a squib kick. It will come to Kuhn at the 20-yard line. He dances, he prances, gets across the 30 to 33-yard line. Central Valley says he fumbled the ball. But the officials say no. Touchdown due to the offensive line there. A nice surge by Billy Ledigy to uh, allow Irie in, but that two-point conversion was all Scholl and just pulling his way in after it. The initial contact was made at about the three. Ledigy is the biggest lineman for Central Valley. Goes 214. He actually lost 20 pounds from a year ago and just feels like he's a better athlete, can move a little quicker. Injury on the field. One of the Lion Tigers is down on that kickoff return. I can't find a number, so I will not guess. Training staff is here. We're told this number 66. That would be Jess Melbrand. Let's go down to Steve Hallstrom. Steve, what do you got? Well, Dana, there's no panic on the Linton uh, sidelines even after that Central Valley touchdown. Coach Dan Imdike said, fellas, they've got some good athletes on their team, too. They're going to make some plays. We just need to turn up the intensity and get one back on our side. 
Mel Brand is now sitting up. There's so many people around him, you don't know if they're looking at an ankle, at a knee, if you had the wind knocked out of him. Well, and now a golf cart is coming out. Seven minutes to play here in the first half. The Valiants and Lion Tigers are tied at eight. Linton scoring on its first possession, a 15-yard TD pass from Jangula to Nelson. Center Valley has just tied the game. And a good sign, Milbrandt is walking off. Not quite under his own power, just getting a little help. When you take a look at that kickoff, Central Valley was claiming there was a fumble, and let's see if we can detect if indeed there was. I think there was. Somebody's diving after a ball. We can't see it through the maze of players, but you saw a Central Valley body flying after that ball. The officials ruled. And I'm not sure the knee was down. The officials ruled the knee was down and the play was over. First and 10 for the Lion Tigers. Jangula keeps it himself. No place to go. Ledigy, Adams, Irie. No room one way and no room the other. No, no place to, no room to run, no place to hide. <laughs> Hard to hide in nine-man football. There's Tim Doctor and Brad Whale, the assistant coaches, along with Dan Emdike on the Lion Tiger sideline. No gain, second and 10. The pitch to Jokum, cuts it up inside. Nice play by Kyle Irie. Knee looks okay there. <laughs> Boy, Central Valley just doing a great job getting the penetration. And as Dan Emdike said yesterday, he said, this is a defense that flies to the football, and you saw it right there. And Linton has had some trouble generating things here after getting a touchdown on the opening drive. Linton, three of eight on third downs. Here's another one. Jangula to throw. He's knocked down from behind. Scoops up. Central Valley is going in for a touchdown. The defense scoring for Central Valley, that's number 32, Jerry Olson. Nobody protected Jangula's backside, and the Valiants make the Lion Tigers pay. Well, they didn't get a fumble on the kickoff, but they got one that really matters here. Jangula just gets stripped of the ball from behind by Lonnie Olson. He didn't even see Olson coming, and Jerry Olson had the clean shot at the touchdown. The brothers, the Olson brothers, getting the Valiants on the board again. Here's another two point conversion. Irie wants to throw, intended for Solomon Bierke. It's knocked away by J.J. Kuhn. <laughs> another look at the forced turnover by Central Valley. Reverse angle here and Levi Jangula didn't even have a chance. Lonnie Olson just storming from behind and allowing Jerry Olson to pick it up and cruise in and the Valiants have the lead. It's a couple times now that Lonnie Olson has been left alone coming in from that far side and nobody on that offensive line of Linton will pick him up. Central Valley taking the lead 14 to eight. Central Valley, by the way, is made up of Buxton, Reynolds, and Cummings. 35th year of Central Valley's history. <laughs> Randy Vegan has been there for 25 of them. 23 yards, the official measurement on that fumble recovery for the touchdown by Jerry Olson. Ledigy 
kicks it away. Another squibber. This one will go out of bounds. Flag flies. And the Lenton Lions will have excellent field position again. First trip to the state finals for Central Valley. And some folks brought their toys with them. <laughs> Coming up next here on the ABC Dakota Sports Network, the Class A championship game featuring Stanley and Carrington. First and 10 from the 35. Misdirection. Jokum cuts it inside. And he may score. Irie. No. Jokum stays on his feet, and he will go 65 yards for the touchdown. Wow. 12 seconds apart. The inside wasn't opening up for the Lion Tigers earlier, but it sure opened up that time. And Jokum just burned everybody with his speed. Clinton now to take the lead. Jokum in motion. The give is to Jokum on the end around. And he converts the two-point conversion. Linton leading Central Valley again by a score of 16-14. Here's the touchdown. A little misdirection. They were having trouble running inside earlier, but look at the room that Jokum had. And Kyle Irie almost had him, but almost only counts in horseshoe. And hand grenades. But boy, once he cut, here's a here's a better look at it. You'll see the alleys open up here with some nice blocking. He just had everybody turned around at this point, and a nice block there by Ben Rands, 82. And you're not going to tackle him with an arm. Jokum scoring his 11th rushing touchdown of the year to give the Lion Tigers the lead again. 5.25 to play first half. It's 16-14, Linton. Renz will boot it away. Now this is nine-man football. That, this is, <laughs> this is nine-man football. We've come to love the wide open action. Sholen and Irie stand at their own 10. They're not gonna get it. Flags again. They might as well just give the teams the ball at the 35-yard line. Nobody wants to kick it to their no. return men. <laughs> Obviously. All, all booting it out of bounds. Well, Central Valley allowing an average of 10 per game. Lion Tigers already with 16. See, Coach Imdike has taken off his sandals and gone to the conventional coaching shoe. He wears sandals, I guess, most of the time, and one of his assistants said he normally wears them at home games, at least until the snow flies, just because they're comfortable. They don't have foot problems, just thinks they're comfortable. Well, there was an offsides or procedure on the kickoff, so our officials will make Linton boot it away again, this time from their own 35. Linton allowing six points a game coming into the game, so with Central Valley at 14, both teams allowing more points than they usually do already here in the state final. Renz again. This time he gets his foot into it. Danny wow. Sholin at his 20-yard line, middle return. Some room. Can lightning strike again? We've got a foot race. Danny Sholin. Tackled by the man who booted the ball away, Ben Renz. This is nine-man football. Yes, sir. 
Shulin knocked out of bounds at the 12-yard line. We saw the alley open up on that Linton touchdown, and the alley opened up here. Nice block, first of all, by Nick Adams earlier on the play, and then Shulin just cut outside, and at this point, looked like Brent Weber might get a shot at him, but it wound up to be Ben Renz. We're going to be out of breath here by halftime, I think. Boy, he just turned it outside and almost put it in. First and 10 at the 12. Irie right to the air. Incomplete. Solomon Bierke bobbled it and couldn't hang on. A rare miss for Bierke. Excellent hands. Let's go down to Steve Holstrom. Steve? Guys, an injury update on Jess Milbrat. The trainers were looking very carefully at the inside of his left knee. They will not say if it was a bruise or a twist of that knee, but he's got ice on it now, and he's walking very, very slowly on the Linton sidelines. Second down. The toss is to Olsen. He snuffed up. Olhauser and Huber are there. Well, he had the escort, but the holes never opened up. Well, it's third down and ten, but you got to believe they're not going to settle for a field goal. No. So two downs to make ten yards, or two downs to make a touchdown. Irie scrambling. Turns it up. Goes outside. Holy smokes. To the corner. Touchdown, Kyle oh. Irie. Wow. He ran about 40 yards, but in the playbook, it'll be a 12 or 13-yard touchdown run. My gosh. <laughs> Back and forth we go here. And here we go. Another two-point conversion attempt. Irie will throw. Back to the middle. Incomplete. Excellent coverage by the Linton Lion Tigers. But the Valiants reclaim the lead. It's 20 to 16. Looked like he was just going to scramble. He had the hole in front of him, and then he decides to cut it outside and look at the speed just to get away and turn it out. Unbelievable. That's what you call field vision. Wow. A very impressive run. to play in the first half. In a minute and 16 seconds, <laughs> we've had two Central Valley touchdowns and one Linton touchdown and a two-point conversion. Billy Ledigy will try and keep the ball in bounds. Weber and Kuhn. Excuse me, J.J. Kuhn stand deep. The squibber. Kuhn fields it at his 20. Outside. Closed off by number five, Andy Wasleen. So it'll be a 10-yard return for J.J. Kuhn. Linton Lion Tigers have four minutes and 13 seconds to work with. Central Valley wants a timeout. I think they probably just want to give their kids a breather. <laughs> I think They've we could all use one. Up and down the field, and yeah. a lot of those guys play both ways. I mean, if you're used to watching a college football game in here, you see Bison players. You know, I, I swear, from, from the 20 to the 20, lined up on the sideline. You look down from up here and you <laughs> see Central Valley on this side, they can all get in about a 10-yard area. 
Central Valley, I think they've only got 25 players. But in the past two minutes and 46 seconds, the Valiants have scored three touchdowns. And they can score. Yes, they can. Outscoring opponents 352 to 112. A couple of shutouts along the way. Linton, as impressive, if not more, 316 to 63. And that Lion Tiger defense pitching five shutouts this year. Okay. Shutout Underwood, second game of the regular season. Then they strung four in a row together. Uh, uh, beginning with the fourth game, Wishick Ashley, Strasburg Zeeland, Steele Dawson, and Napoleon. And these aren't close games. 54 nothing, 22 nothing, 44 nothing, 38 nothing. And you're talking about a team that finished second in Region 4. <laughs> That's right. But playing some good football. First and 10, Lion Tigers. Fullback, Aaron Nelson, up and over for a couple, maybe three. Fumble on the play. Central Valley says they have it, and the officials agree. I never saw it. Let's see if our camera guys can pick it up. We'll get a better look at it here. Yep. Loose ball there, and that's where we were blocked. And who got it? If I'm not mistaken, Aaron Sundin, number 33, caused it. Didn't see who recovered it. Four oh five to play. Linton suffering its third turnover of the ball game. Irie right to work. Going deep. Complete at the four yard line. That's number 81 tight end Kurt Hong. And Irie took a shot after getting that ball away. Hong had to come back on the ball too. Irie got off a wobbler. Not your tight spiral. They don't travel as far. And Hong getting that deep downfield is saying something because even his coach admits that Hong is going to set any land speed records. <laughs> but a steady receiver. His sixth catch of the year. A big one. Sholin off tackle. Touchdown. Central Valley. After struggling for much of the first quarter, Central Valley has exploded, scoring 26 points now. It's 26-16. The two-point conversion yet to come. Novacek in motion. Irie turns Ooh. it up, and I don't think he got in. He did not. Big hit on the play. I think it was Waylon Olhauser who took the legs out from under Irie. So the Valiants can score, but they have a little trouble converting two. 26-16. 3.33 to play, first half. And by my count, they have scored those 26 points in a span of three minutes and 40 seconds. Here's the run by Sholin. Has the guys in front of him. You see Lonnie Olson there, number 34. And where things weren't going Central Valley's way offensively in the first quarter, they are certainly going their way now. And a lot of time left. But here's a, here's a better angle. Oh, here's the uh, two-point conversion try. I already took another shot here. Looked like Lee Nagel getting it in and stopping him short of the goal line, but it's still a 10-point Central Valley lead. But Dan Emdike said it. He says, you've got to stop Irie. And they haven't done that in the second quarter. Ledigy squibs it. 
Picked up by number 48, Leo Kutz. His knee was down, though. And the ball will be just outside the 30-yard line. First and 10 for Levi Jangula and company. The squibber by Ledigy. Yep. And Kuntz does go down. Once the knee touches, that's it. Play over. Friends in motion. Jangula oh. fumbles the snap. Loose ball. Linton recovers. Johnny on the spot is number 53. That's the center, Chris Noel. The last thing Linton needs is another fumble. They've had three turnovers already. The last one wound up resulting in a touchdown. And the ball just slipped out of Noel's hand. It never got up to Jangula's hands. You just wonder if they're a little rattled here. Screen pass, Olhauser, this worked big in the first half. But Central Valley is not fooled this time around. Looked like Aaron Sundin tripped him up, and that shot tells you all you need to know. Look at the body language. Yeah, yeah. M. Dyke looking down, and and uh, vegan all fired up third down and 11. Jangula oh. under pressure dumps it off airborne oh. but short of the first down out to the 30 what five yard line is wade huber the big tight end huber this year has tied a school record with eight touchdowns 17 receptions, that was number 18. J.J. Kuhn is on to kick it away. And Central Valley is going to have more than a minute and a half to work with here. Huber looked bigger than 170 pounds here. He sure does. He gave a pop to Aaron Sundin there. Oh. Ledigy almost got that one. But there is no flag, and I think Ledigy was expecting one. He pounded the turf like... Oh, why'd you do that? Okay, left. Randy Vegan giving the play to Kyle Irie. Let's go down to Steve Holstrom. Well, guys, the official said on that play that uh, the Central Valley defender tipped that punt as it was leaving the foot of the punter, but Dan Imdike does not agree. He thought there should have been a penalty for running into the punter on that play. And once you tip the ball, everybody's fair game out there. Uh -huh. One thirty-six to play here in the first half. Joland loses yards. Olhauser is there. So is number 53. Chris Noel. Noel just got right in there and Linton needs something to hang its hat on here and get inspired about him. A little surprised they've got all three timeouts left, but they're not going to stop the clock here. I think they want to get to halftime. I, I settle, think so too. Settle down the team and say we're, we're better than this. Let's come oh, up and play. Two in a row. Maybe the defense will set the tone heading into halftime. That's Nelson with the big hit. Central Valley, I don't believe we'll get greedy. They're happy to run out the clock. Nelson just plowed in there, shaking off the block from Kurt Hogg. So back to back, good defensive stops here for Linton. Randy Vegan, admittedly very nervous before the game. And he said, I guess you're supposed to be. Here's the toss to Sholin. Cuts it back, but Valiant's going backwards on this series thanks to an inspired Linton defense. Nick Eibach in there, Lee Nagel. What a series this has been. They've just played inspired football and now they do stop the clock with 20.5 seconds remaining. Linton did not want the clock to run out so they will make Central Valley kick it away. 
and either bring a lot of people to try and block it or set up a return. Their only chance right now is to come in and block the punt. Aaron, try not to kick the punt. They're still, still arguing about that uh, punt that they thought uh, should have been running into the kicker. But 50 there, Nick Eibach just got turned around, but he recovered nicely, and by that time, he had a couple of teammates, Nagel and, and Nelson, coming in to help him. Nick Eibach, just a 160-pound junior, but Dan Imdach says he reads coverages very well and very quickly, and that time you could see that he read that play quickly and came up and made the stop. Let's go down to Steve. Steve, what do you have? Well, guys, Chris Noel, as uh, you had mentioned, there was some trouble on the center to the quarterback exchange on that last possession. I noticed a couple of series ago he came off shaking his right hand. He still is kind of looking at that hand. It's like there's an injury there. He's not sure what's going on. But that might be the reason why those exchanges haven't been so sharp. We'll keep an eye on that. Thank you, Steve. 20.5 seconds to go here in the first half, and the Valiants booted away. Sundin. Gets a valiant roll. Jokum at his 40. Gets to the 48-yard line. And Linton will have one, maybe two more plays here in the first half. Normally, J.J. Kuhn and Brent Weber are back deep on returns, but that time, Coach Imdike putting out the stud, Justin Jokum, to try and make something happen at the end of the half. What a record for Dan Imdike. Only 44 losses in 23 years. 184 wins. Randy Vegan also an impressive record. 147 wins, 89 losses in 25 years. Back down to Steve Hallstrom. Steve? You guys, an injury update on Jess Milbrat. The fine junior offensive lineman will not return. There's a knee injury there. The trainers, again, are not specific on what it is. They say it does not look like a serious injury, but uh, he will be sidelined for the rest of this game. And uh, Dana, we talked to Dan Imdike. That is a very big loss for the Linton team. Yes, it is, and what a terrible way for the season to end. Milbrandt described as a pleasant surprise by Coach Imdike this year, a first-year starter, and you just don't replace a 235-pound oh. nose guard in nine-man football. But he is a junior. Eight point nine seconds left here. Jangula to Kuhn. Here comes the halfback pass going deep. Intended for Jokum, knocked away. Kyrell Irie was there on the play. Ball was a, a tish underthrown. Two point five seconds to play now here in the first half. Talking about Imdike and how long he's been at Linton. He, He's now coaching the sons of his former players, Waylon and Brent Olhauser's father, Marlon, played for him, and Tyler Mossett's father, Jerome, played for him, and Imdike says, that's enough. Hmm. <laughs> Don't need to remind me how long I've been here. Last play of the first half. Try it again. No. Horn goes off, play's still alive. This is back to the quarterback, Jangula. Look out. Brought down by Olsen at the 33-yard line, and the first half ends. Probably an appropriate way for this wild first half to end. Central Valley leading the Lion Tigers of Linton by a score of 26 to 16. Momentarily, we'll hear from head coach Dan Imdike of Linton, Hazelton, Moffitt, Braddock. conversation in midfield with quite possibly the captains. I think they were deciding the second half. Central Valley will get the ball to begin the second half and Linton will boot it away. Let's go down to Steve. The first quarter went so well for your team. What changed in the second quarter? Well, the old mole changed in big plays. They they got the big pass, the uh, kick return. Uh, we can't give them guys the ball in, a, in that uh, field position and, uh, and that's what's hurting us. We can play good D on them out in the middle but not down by the goal line and um, they're doing a, they're doing a good job at their big play it looks like you've seen something to the left side of your offensive formation that you're working on is there something in the scouting report that you noticed there well we do think that that was their, that's their weaker side the way they're set up and stuff but it's not going so good their linebackers are stepping up real well and 
and doing a good job. So we're struggling right now. Okay, Coach, best of luck in the second half. Dan Imdag, the head coach of the Linton team, and uh, his team's got some work to do, trailing by 10 points at halftime. Steve, thank you. Central Valley heads to the locker room. The Linton Lions take a knee in the end zone. This is nine-man football in North Dakota. The nine-man championship, half over. Valiants lead the Lion Tigers by a score of 26 to 16. And we'll be back to the Fargo Dome after this. Have fun, win prizes with the ever-popular Stop and Go Pick the Pros contest. Each of the weekly winners receive a collectible limited edition autographed Viking football. Grand prize, a 31-inch color TV. Pick up your pick sheet at any of the 28 locally owned area Stop and Goes. There's one nearby, sponsored by Coca-Cola, KFGO, and Stop and Go. Stop and go. As stewards of North Dakota State University, we recognize this as an institution with so much history and so much future. Because of the education, because of the training, I was able to excel. Whether it was programming, operating systems, it was fantastic. Having a degree from NDSU is a major advantage. Not only did I obtain a strong academic background, I was able to start a gene therapy company. We work with the top gene therapy researchers in the world. Yeah, I've always been proud to be an NDSU graduate. North Dakota State University, your major advantage. Until just one isn't enough. You want more. You need more. You gotta have more. Catch the FMI Sharks this Friday when they take on Omaha. And this Saturday when they play Cedar Rapids. The puck drops at 7.05. Call the tank for ticket information. The hottest ticket on ice. The FM Ice Sharks. Once the frenzy starts, you just can't stop it. are a couple of the guys that are making it all happen some of the people going on behind the scenes with me is ed lockwood and kurt jones these are two members of the metro area tournament committee they are in charge of hosting the event and putting it on here at the fargo dome ed lockwood the athletic director at fargo south high school and ed let's just talk a little bit about uh what happens behind the scenes here tell us what this committee is all about well this committee is formed by five athletic directors in the metro area darwin gorder from oak grove Myself from Fargo South, Gary Mayhew from North, Kurt Jones from uh, West Fargo, and John Wartenby from Fargo Shanley. We used to run the tournaments as a Fargo school district, and about several years ago, we decided it was very important that we have a good manpower base and be able to spread out some of our responsibilities. So we formed this committee, and it's been just a great marriage. Uh, we have a number of volunteers because we have five schools to pick from. If you look out here today, you'll find people from every school, and it just doesn't tax any one school district. It's we're able to spread the workload out. It's just a fun thing to be involved with. What is the most enjoyable part of hosting a tournament like this? Ed, you've been around for a lot of these tournaments. What's the most fun about being involved in staging an event like this? Well, I guess I can go back to my first Dakota Bowl, and I remember watching one of the teams come in from a nine-man school, never been in the Fargo Dome, and they walked out in the middle of the floor there's a big star out there on the 50-yard line. The lights were off, and the lights started coming on, and all of the kids got together, and they put their heads together and looked up at the ceiling. Now, to me, that's just what it's all about, being able to give kids experiences and something they'll never, ever forget. 
And as you're around these events, I'm sure that there's a temptation sometimes to look at it as a chore. But then you remember, I'm sure, that these kids, these cheerleaders, these fans may be here for the first time, and it may be their only trip to the state tournament. That's got to still be exciting. Well, it does. And that's that's part of what you, you feed off of is the fact that you're helping someone get somewhere where they want to be and also have the opportunity to provide good hospitality. Fargo has prided itself in the last several years that we can do anything that we need to do and, and do it with a high degree of efficiency and a lot of hospitality and the feedback we're getting back is we're doing well. And before we let you go, we have to ask you about that construction project going on at South High School. Tell us, uh, give us an update on that. Well, we're pretty excited. We've got most everything in place uh, as far as our athletic facilities. We have a few things left because uh, we have a little more remodeling to do in the, the weight room and the wrestling room. Our track is done now with a few little pieces this spring. Our football field and our soccer fields will be able to play on in about a year. So we're excited about the athletic endeavors. The school itself, it's going to be another four or five months before we're totally done. It's been a good fall for, for South High. We've done well with all of our athletic and activity programs. We're really proud of what we've been able to do. Well, best of luck in continuing the tradition of hosting good tournaments here at the Fargo Dome. And thanks very it's much for your time. Also with me is Kurt Jones. He is the athletic director at West Fargo High School. And Kurt, tell us a little bit about what your role is with uh, the state uh, football championships. What will you be doing behind the scenes here? Well, I guess uh, whatever Ed isn't doing, I'm doing. Whatever I'm, I'm not doing, Ed's doing. So we... Uh, this is our seventh uh, Dakota Bowl, and uh, we've gotten to understand each person's role and, and overlap whenever uh, he gets uh, a little bit of pressure to do this or do that, and the same uh, goes my way. So it's, uh, you know, when it comes to staffing, getting people in line to, uh, you know, take care of the hospitality things or the press box or uh, lining up officials or people on the field, the field monitors, those sorts of things. Uh, we both share in that duty as well as taking care of uh, the schools coming in, uh, taking care of their practices, taking care of uh, the administrators when they come in. Uh, they've got to turn in their tickets and turn in the things that they were given uh, as a responsibility for their community during the week. Uh, so they come in the building and they say, where's Ed or where's Kurt? And, and if I'm there, I help. If, uh, if Ed's there, he helps. And we just kind of overlap. And uh, like I said, we've been at this seven years now. and we. We don't even write things down anymore. We just kind of assume that one does it the other, and then when one doesn't, then we just say, "Well, let's let's pick up the pieces and get her get her taken care of." And uh, we seem to be uh, good enough managers to kind of remember things, uh, and we've got kind of a checklist. But every now and then, uh, we're getting older, so our memory gets a little <laughs> worse. And uh, but we've been able to take care of most of our our detail things. And uh, uh, like I say, if I forget something, he picks it up, and if he forgets something, that uh, then then I pick it up. So it, we've got a kind of a neat thing going on with with both Ed and myself and also everybody involved with the tournament committee. Uh, they all keep us in line. They all keep us on uh, on task of what we need to do for all these tournaments. Now, many people may remember Kurt Jones as the running backs coach for the North Dakota State Bison in the 80s, some of those great teams that were there. And I guess in a way, Kurt, this is a nice way to stay close to a football, which is a game that's uh, near and dear to your heart. Definitely. And uh, it's good to see uh, uh, when Packer football, uh, when I went to West Fargo back about 10 years ago, it wasn't so well. In fact, they had a different streak, and that was 20-some uh, games where they hadn't won a game, and now they're on the, the positive streak. And uh, obviously, I like to see all of our kids be successful in every activity, whether it's athletic activities or uh, you know any of the co-curricular activities. And uh, they're student athletes, they're students first. We want them to be successful in the classroom, but we like to see that extra, the extra things they do outside the classroom that kind of ties in the community with the with the school district and all those things are real positive when we see the accomplishments these football uh, players have accomplished this year. We've been treated to some great football by the West Fargo Packers over the last two years. So good, in fact, we'll see them tomorrow afternoon here at the Dome. We understand, Kurt, that that success at the varsity level has really uh, trickled down to some of your underclass programs and it sounds like there's a whole new breed of good young Packers coming up through the ranks. Tell us about that. Well, you'd like to make predictions, uh, you know, from what's down there from the 6th and 7th and 8th graders, but Obviously, those are things we want to just, uh, you know, we want those coaches teaching fundamentals. And right now, as we look down at the numbers, they're real positive numbers, uh, strong numbers, uh, whether they're in seventh grade football, eighth grade football, ninth grade football, or even FM athletics. And we're all kind of tied into the same sort of philosophy. We want to teach kids the proper fundamentals, the proper uh, sportsmanship, and do things right. And then as they get to the higher level, they can kind of hone in on some of those uh, details that they need to be uh, successful at the varsity level and hopefully the whole thing works out by the time they graduate. In the last few years, it's been real positive. All right, Kurt, well, we'll let you get back to work, but thanks very much for sitting down and visiting with us here at halftime.
Kurt Jones, the athletic director of West Fargo, also part of the Metro Area Tournament Committee, putting on this great event at this great place here in Fargo. We'll be back with more on the KFC Halftime Report after these words. small. Lease a new Cherokee Sport at your Jeep dealer for just $279 a month and get all this at no extra charge. Whoa! What's, what's up? Oh! That's, see, that's a mess. That's lame. Sports drinks? Colas? Like that's working up there? But you get something good. But you know why you don't have game? Because you don't got milk. That's why. Vitamin D. I got you want the D. You need me. Oh, right there. Baskets that way, Chief. Yeah. Want game? Milk has nine essential nutrients for active bodies. When you guys are done denying, you know, your beverage problem, give me a call. I'll be in the fridge. Come on, Shake. Life is a journey. Every day we encounter something new, something familiar, something obscure lead you down your path. I-29 provides local internet access to the world for as low as $10.95 a month. Get started on your journey to the future with I-29. I-29, your easy on-ramp to the internet. Gateway Building Systems. Their name says it all. They build systems. From multiple story commercial elevators to smaller scale farm bins. Gateway offers expert installation of grain dryers, bin floors, and grain handling leg systems specifically designed for your needs. And when you go with Gateway for implement storage and other ag structures, you'll get the rugged durability and good looks of Lester and Butler pre-engineered buildings. Gateway Building Systems. Thoughtful design, quality materials, and reliable workmanship. Call Gateway today. Back in the Fargo Dome for the nine-man championship game. Central Valley leading Linton by a score of 26 to 16. One of the key plays in the first half gave Central Valley a 14-8 lead. It came from the defense of all people, as explosive as the Valiants are on offense. Sometimes Central Valley's best offense is their defense. Nobody picks up Lonnie Olson. He forces Jangula to fumble. Jerry Olson. All he had to do was pick it up and run 23 yards for the touchdown that gave Central Valley the lead for the first time. Another look from our end zone camera. Nobody had responsibility of Lonnie Olson, and he stripped Jangula to allow Jerry Olson to score. Let's go down to Steve Hallstrom here. He's with Randy Vegan, head coach of Central Valley. Coach, you wait 25 years to get to this game, then you have to put up with a first quarter like that. What changed the tide for you there? Well, I don't know. We had some breaks. Uh, we recovered a fumble. We've had an interception. We had a big uh, return on a kickoff. And uh, again, we have to get some things done up front. The offensive a little bit more consistent. We're not blocking the way we should. And defensively, we've given up some big plays. Uh, again, a long touchdown after we'd scored, and we worked too hard to score. But this is nine-man football, and I don't think you've seen the end of the scoring yet. Coach, you recognized early that the Linton offensive attack was going to your right side of your defense. You made adjustments. It seemed like you really contained them a lot better from that point. Right. I think if anybody looks at our uh, roster and sees a 133-pound defensive end there, that's where you're going to get it, you know, go after and attack us. And so we're trying to make some adjustments, and we're going to have to continue. Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. Randy Vigan, his team is up by 10 points. One more half like that, and he'll have the first state championship as a coach. Well, that 133-pound defensive end is Jerry Olson, and he has a touchdown in this game. Didn't start for Central Valley until the playoffs, and is certainly making the most of his opportunity. Clock winds down. We're about ready for the second half of the nine-man championship game. The first of four here in Dakota Bowl 99. Game two today is the Class A championship between Stanley and Carrington. Tomorrow, our coverage begins at noon with the Class AA championship between Minot Ryan and Lisbon. And we finish it off with the big boys of North Dakota football, the AAA title game between number one and 11-0 West Fargo against number two and 11-0 Minot High. The 
the horn sounds and as we saw at the end of the first half Linton will kick off to begin this half and Central Valley will be on offense first. Here are your halftime stats. Valiance with 121 yards passing. Linton 80. Rushing. Linton with the edge. The real telltale sign is in return yardage. Central Valley with 121 return yards. Linton 57. Plus the Lion Tiger team suffering those three turnovers. Renz boots it away. This will be Irie at about the 17 yard line. Across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Tackled by number 80, Dustin Kurtz. Well, the Valiants said earlier in the week they didn't like playing in the Fargo Dome. They like it right now with a 10 point lead. But what the part that they don't like is the fatigue factor. It does get hot down on the field. We'll see what effect that has, if any, on either team today as the second half wears on. First play of the second half for Central Valley. Irie to Showland. Across the 35 to the 40-yard line. Found a hole and kept the legs churning. Central Valley used to be a lighter blue and gold, kind of a powder blue. I seem to remember that good basketball team they had was not quite as royal blue. New Rockford has the powder blue now, I think. Irie to Sholin again. Nelson is there for the stop. And it'll bring up a third down for the Valiants. Nelson's played a whale of a football game today. Scored the First touchdown of Dakota Bowl 99 has played very well defensively for the Lion Tigers. Third and a long one. Sholin has the first down. Not by much, but he does have it. Sholin's a stronger runner, even though he's just 150 yards. He can break some tackles. Yep, only 151 pounds, but and, and only a junior. You heard Coach Vegan talk about 133-pound sophomore Jerry Olson. You just give these kids a little time, and they'll put some pounds on by their senior year. New set of downs for Ivory. Movement far side of the field against Central Valley. Solomon Bierke will be flagged for illegal procedure. We'll back up the Valiants five. Central Valley fans occupying the near side of the football field. Linton has the far side. First and 15. Olson maybe gets one on the left side and another flag comes flying in. Yeah. Normally, yeah, after the whistle too. Normally it's holding and that's what we have here. So after one first down for the Valiants, they're gonna start shooting themselves in the foot. Two penalties in a row. You're tuning in late. Linton lost Jesse Milbrandt to a knee injury in the first half, and that's one of the areas where the Lion Tigers have been fortunate this year. Uh, Imdike says they've had no serious injuries, just some bumps and bruises, and that's why they're here. If they lose a starter in the first half today. I think this is intended to be a shovel pass, and it is finally completed. But Linton is there in a big, big way. That's wingback Darren Novacek. That is not the way that play is designed. No, it's, they lost a yard 
on the play, and Irie had gone so far back by the time he decided to shovel it to Novacek that it was going to be tough to make up that yardage just to get to the line of scrimmage, and they never did. Too many white jerseys. It will be second down and 26 now for Central Valley. Die play. Olsen breaks one tackle, but that's about it. Gets across the 25 to the 26, and that's about the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third and 26. Well, Linton ending the first half with a good defensive stand, and that's so far carried over here to the early stages of the third quarter. Ten points is nothing in nine-man no, no. football. That's what think. Central Valley's lead is. Irie will throw. Well, he's going to turn it up and run, and he's got a lot of room on the far side of the field. He'll have a first down. Dustin Kurtz finally brings down Irie, but on third down and 26, the Valiants convert. Tim Dyke said it at halftime. He said it before the game. You got to prevent the big play, and and they didn't. A good block there from Darren Novacek, number four, and Irie has the speed to turn this into a first down. Unbelievable. Just when Linton was smiling a little bit defensively, Irie burns him. First and 10 at the 45. This is Sholin. He's going to boot outside, cut it back. Tripped up by J.J. Kuhn after a gain of two. Waylon Ohauser also there on the play. The grandson of Al Dosh. Say that in Western North Dakota and you're talking about a football god. And the nephew of UND assistant football coach Tom Dosh. Al Dosh, longtime football coach at Strasburg, is now retired and apparently golfing a lot. 328 wins at Strasburg. Irie on the option will turn it up himself. Gain about six yards. Linton, North Dakota, in the summer, is home to a football camp for high school kids. And they bring in big time NFL players. We were out there about two years ago, and it's amazing. The, the, the Terry Allen, uh, running back for the Washington Redskins, they had several outstanding receivers, like Hilliard, who, who starred at Florida. Sholin up the middle, no sir, Bob. Wade Huber is there. Wade Huber is a talented wrestler, was upset last year before he made it to state, eliminated. And that has, according to Coach Dan Imdike, kind of changed this young man where he takes nothing for granted anymore. Plays hard, practices hard. Every once in a while, a, a setback can be good. You don't enjoy it at the time. Fourth down, three yards to go for the Valiants. Irie wants a timeout. Didn't like what he saw defensively. And the Valiants want to talk it over. 6-10 to play third quarter. Central Valley leading Linton, 26-16. For your next banquet, convention, or meeting, don't overlook the Doublewood Inn of Fargo for affordable pricing and top-of-the-line accommodations. A total of 14,700 square feet of flexible meeting space can accommodate groups of 12 to 1,200. The Woodland Square Complex features 11-foot high ceilings, a large dance floor, and garage door for convenient loading and unloading. The indoor pool, whirlpool, and sauna area, casino lounge, and Dakota Grill restaurant will make your stay enjoyable. Fargo's premier choice for meeting planners. The Doublewood Inn, Fargo. Boy, come on, we gotta go. Get your screen off. The screen's stuck. Hey, you stay away from here. Larry, stuck. Bella. 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 Only Pella Windows offers the built-in roll screen, so you'll never have to hassle with your screens again. Pella, viewed to be the best.
Back in the Fargo Dome, the nine-man championship game between Central Valley and Linton. The Valiants leading 26-16, driving here in the third quarter, but facing a fourth down and three. After taking a timeout, they decide to boot it away. Sundin aims for the corner, and it goes out of bounds. We'll have to wait and see how good a kick this is. Out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. So a nice boot by Aaron Sundin to pin the Lion Tigers deep in their own end zone. Lions have been a little quiet on offense since that 65-yard touchdown run by Justin Jokum that made it 16-14 Linton. Nelson, big hole, left side. Gain of seven, maybe eight. There's a run reminiscent of what we saw earlier in this game from Linton. We mentioned in our keys to the game, ball control offense. That's something they have to get back to here. They've only been able to muster one touchdown in each of the first two quarters. Second down two, little misdirection. Jokum will be close to the first down. Ledigy, the sophomore nose guard. Excuse me, senior. He started as a sophomore for the Central Valiant Valiants. Central Valley Valiants. 5'10", 214. Half yard short of the first down. Third down and we'll call it one. Nelson, the fullback, gets the nose of the ball to the 25-yard line. In fact, it's just over the 25, so that will be a first down for the Lion Tigers. In comes Dustin Kurtz with the play. At the end of the game, we'll choose the American Dairy Player of the Game, brought to you by the American Dairy Association on behalf of your local dairy farmers who ask, got milk? First and 10, Jangula pitches to Jokum. Solomon Bjerke makes the stop, but not before Jokum gets across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Had Nelson out there blocking for him, the fullback. You'll see it here, number 40. But Solomon Bjerke, a good pursuit guy for this Central Valley team, just tripped him up on the ankles there. Second and three here. Wren's in motion. Jokum, Sundin, maybe a gain of one. Flag on the play, I believe Renz in motion turned up too soon. And that is the call. The officiating crew from Oaks, North Dakota, John Muckenhern, Don Miller, Brett Gibbs, and Chad Averly. There you see Renz kind of faking upfield, catching himself, but the officials caught him. Just seems that Linton, they'll get a good play, a good couple of plays, and then they just can't sustain it here. Something happens to set them back, and there you see a penalty. Second and long here. Kurtz is now in motion. Angular, the lefty will throw it. Underthrown, intended for Wade Huber, the big tight end. In talking to one of the assistant coaches for Linton before the game, we discussed the use of the rubber ball that is basically a tradition in Linton. Kind of like the old black Converse basketball shoes worn, worn by Oaks many, many years ago. And I said, you know, it can help a kid who has a smaller hand the assistant coach says, yeah, our quarterback has a small hand. We even let some of the air out of the ball so he can grip it better. 
Third and nine, Jangula will throw it. Here comes that screen pass again. Jokum cuts it back. Denied first down yardage. Yerke and Wazlin are there. And what looked to be a pretty good play closed in a hurry. He had the escort. Three blockers in front of him on the screen almost uh, threw that one away. A nice catch to save it. But once he cut inside, that gave Central Valley a little time to close the middle. And Andy Wazlin was there along with Solomon Bjerke. Irie goes deep, stands at his 40. Uh -oh. Boone will boot it away, but there's a bad snap. Now he's running for his life. He throws it. Picked off. Here's Irie. One man to beat. Touchdown, Central Valley. Wow. They gave him another chance, and the Valiants bring it in. That Fourth play, turnover. That play started bad and just got worse. They had two Linton defenders get hands on it. And it bounces right to Irie, and we all know what he can do. His second interception of the game. He says, and his third as, touchdown of the game. As we started this telecast, that he can hurt you in so many ways. Scored a touchdown, picked off a pass, now picked off another one and returned it for six. Sholin to the outside. The two-point conversion is good. Four, 16, Central Valley with the lead. And we'll be back to the Fargo Dome and our continuing coverage of Dakota Bowl 99. With our most advanced four-wheel drive system ever, Quadra Drive, Jeep Grand Cherokee goes where you could encounter anything. So we test it for anything. Check one out at your Jeep dealer. Farnham's Napa Auto Parts, we keep America running with the best service from the most experienced parts people in the business and the value of quality Napa parts and accessories. Cut through the night with laser blue headlights as low as $9.99. Available now at Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. We keep America running. Austin Shower, WDAY News at 5. Officially, it's a 33-yard interception return for a touchdown by Kyle Irie, giving the Valiants of Central Valley a 34-16 lead over Linton. Ledigy. Boots it away this time. Over the head of Weber, but we have flags down. sides against the Central Valley. Someone anxious to get down and make a tackle. So the Valiants will back it up five and Ledigy will be forced to kick it over again. Well, in a sentence, Linton has made too many mistakes today. One touchdown, four turnovers, one touchdown scored off a fumble recovery, one touchdown returned on the interception after the muffed punt snap there. 20 points, 20 of Central Valley's 34 points scored off turnovers today. And that tells you all you need to know about this game. It's important to get turnovers. It's also important to convert after you get turnovers, and that's what Central Valley has done. And they've been cashing them in all year. Ledigy will squib it this time. Ball will go out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. 
There's statistician Brittany Vegan, the coach's daughter. And the Linton sideline looking for something to cheer about. Here's the muff punt again by Linton. Kuhn was in trouble right from the start. Now you'll see it goes off two Linton players' hands. Nick Eibach and Aaron Nelson both had a crack at it. But it winds up in Irie's hands, and that's the man. If you're Linton, you do not want the ball in his hands because he does so many things to hurt you. And he does it again there. Linton from its own 35-yard line. Angula will roll out and keep it himself. Now he cuts it inside and runs into a couple of valiants. Lonnie Olson will get credit for the tackle. A lot of running for a couple of yards. Three or four there. He had, he had the blocker on the outside. In number 50, Nick Eibach, but once he cut it in, there were nothing but blue jerseys surrounding him. Second down five, Jangula will throw, and he'll throw deep. Who else? Kyle Irie with the INT. He runs out of bounds at the 30-yard line, and the Valiants can smell blood in the water. Well, that's three interceptions today for Kyle Irie. And Jangula threw that up, and then he only had one man down there, and that man was outmanned in the coverage. Lion Tigers aren't afa afraid to throw it to Ben Renz. In fact, just kind of throw it up like a jump ball because it's 6-3. More often than not, he comes down with it. He caught just seven passes this year, but he averaged 38 yards of reception. Irie is basically back there, Pat, playing free safety in center field. Sholin into the secondary. Breaking tackles down to the 22-yard line. Dustin Kurtz, J.J. Kuhn on the stop for the Lion Tigers. Boy, Central Valley, just everything just feeds off itself. Uh, you know, their defense, their special teams, their offense have all been clicking here ever since the second quarter. 123 to play in the third quarter. Sholin will go in motion. Irie cuts it inside, will have a first down for Central Valley. Well, the only quarterback I ever saw get lower than Irie was probably Jeff Bentram. Irie's day, three INTs, 92 return yards, and a couple of touchdowns. One on offense, one on special teams. I'll bet Coach Vegan isn't nervous anymore. <laughs> I think the butterflies are <laughs> gone with 34-16 on the board. Option football. Showing. Nice open field tackle by Huber. <laughs> Showing getting the pitch and Huber did come in and just got enough of them to turn them around. And second down coming up here, and at this point, Linton just simply has to get some stops on defense to get back into the game and control the ball offensively. Play clock is at two. Irie gets the playoff. Screen pass set up. Sholin. Nice open field tackle. Number 30, Lee Nagel but not before Sholin gets down to the five-yard line and the Valiants pick up another first down. Hagel coming back from his linebacker position and you see Sholin had a couple of 
teammates in front of him and looked as if he might break it here. But nobody picked up number 30, Lee Nagel. The Valiant offense is so well conceived. They roll Irie out to the far side because just a series or so ago offensively, he has a big play to that side. So the Lion Tigers have to respect that. Irie stops, comes back to the other side. We go to the fourth quarter of the nine-man title game. The Valiants leading the Lion Tigers 34-16. Norwest Community Scholarship Fund. This year, celebrating $1 million in scholarship awards and support to students and schools across the region. We want you to dream a dream. That's why your Community Norwest store is awarding $1,000 scholarships again this year. Pick up an application today. Norwest Community Scholarship winners are selected by an independent panel of judges. Winners must attend a school in their home area. Dream a dream. Dream a big dream. At Norwest, we're with you at home, at school, or on the Diderot Trail. The Norwest Community Scholarship Fund, celebrating $1 million in support for students and schools throughout the region. At the end of today's nine-man championship game, we'll select the American Dairy Player of the Game. Brought to you by the American Dairy Association on behalf of your local dairy farmers who ask, got milk? And one of the leading candidates has to be that man wearing number two, Kyle Irie. Seven carries, two touchdowns, three interceptions. One touchdown on the interception return. He is living up to the billing in this state final. First and goal for the Valiants at the six yard line. Sholin. Snuffed out after a gain of, well, probably no gain. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Let's go down to Steve Hallstrom. Steve? Guys, Linton coach Dan Emdike was telling his team in that last huddle, guys, we think there's some things that we can still do offensively to move the ball against the Central Valley team, but the most important thing is we cannot give up any more points. So he really got on his defense to be sturdy, and looks like the penalty is going to help him out here. Holding against the Valiants. Ball moved back to the 11-yard line will still be first and goal. Excuse me, the 16-yard line. But for a team that converted a third down and 26, this is nothing. Irie will roll out. And maybe pick up one. Lee Nagel from his linebacker position making the stop. They're taking a look at Litton linebacker Aaron Nelson on the far side. He's also their fullback. Came off the field before that play. But this is what we talked about earlier, and Steve reiterated that Lion Tigers just have to get some stops here and, and get some confidence and then sustain their own drives, and they just haven't been able to sustain anything on offense for most of the day. At this point, a turnover would help oh, yeah. Litton quite a bit. Irie the swing pass to Olsen and it's incomplete. Forward pass or lateral? Forward pass, the officiating crew says, incomplete. Give me a B! There's a Central Valley Valiant fan doing his own camera work today. <laughs> Timeout Central Valley. They want to talk this over, facing third down and goal at the 16-yard line. Well, Randy Vegan has led the Valiants to the postseason nine times, to the semis in 81, 98, 99. He's been the region coach of the year a couple of times, 98 and 99. The North Dakota coach of the year in 1981. But there was one thing missing from the trophy case in the vegan household and that's a state championship they thought their best shot was last year they went into the semifinals unbeaten wound up losing to Hatton Finley Sharon Irie 
broke his arm in the third quarter of that game, so everything seemed to go wrong for Central Valley that day. And Pat Finley Sharon wound up as the state runner up to Divide County in the uh, championship game. But they've been reminding the kids every game before th this game and all the others about that loss to Hatton Finley Sheer. Not that they need reminding, but got to keep your eye on the prize. And right now, they're right on target. Shotgun formation for Irie. Trip receivers to the near side, to the end zone. Solomon Bierke, no, incomplete. Correction, that was intended for Darren Nabotchik. Bierke was also in the back of the end zone. Bierke was wide open. I don't so, know if Kyle saw him. That's who I thought he was throwing for because he was so wide open. Fourth down now, and I'm sure the Valiants will go for it. Let's go down to Steve Hallstrom. Steve? Well, Pat, you had mentioned a minute ago that Aaron Nelson came off the field. He was holding his right hand, and he was kind of flexing his thumb, and the trainers were kind of tugging at that. Might have been a hyperextended thumb, but it doesn't look too serious. He's back in the game now. Irie again. Fourth and goal from the 16. Quarterback draw inside the 10 to the 9. The ball will go over on downs to win. The defense does hold. But they're 90 yards away with 10.56 to go. They not only wanted to stop the big play, now they need some of their own. So out come the rubber balls, <laughs> and the Lion Tigers go back to work. Fake is the joke of Jangula keeps it to the far side of the field. Runs out of bounds after a gain of about six, maybe seven. That's good in two ways. Positive yards and getting out of bounds to stop the clock. With 10.50 left. Good start to the drive. Jangula just turning it outside and getting some help there from 86 Wade Huber. Lettigy pursuing from his nose guard position. Second and four, we've got flags. Procedure against the Lion Tigers. Well, the last time Linton was here in the Fargo Dome was 1995 when it lost to Thompson in the semifinals. Used to play a lot of semifinal games in in here, but now it's they've gone away from that the last couple of years. This is Nelson. He's nailed by Ledigy and driven back. Looks like Sundin, number 33, the linebacker, also got a pop on him. Yeah, this year, you know, normally at this time of the year, do I dare say the four-letter word, snow is on the ground, but, uh, hmm. yeah, I mean, this is the first year, I think, in all the years we've been doing it inside that the, the weather has been nice outside. Jangula breaks one tackle across the 25 to the 26. First down carry. Jerry Olson was tracking down Jangula from behind, but couldn't catch him. Jerry Olson, number 32, he was pounding the turf afterward, uh, knowing that he had a chance at him. Right Olson. there, he got away. 5'9", 133 pound defensive end. Sophomore. <laughs> Just doesn't sound right, does it? Pushed in when uh, Dan Fugelstein got injured. You got to play with heart when you're 133. Jangula to the air, misses a wide open Waylon Olhauser. And when you're down 34 16, you can ill afford to miss open receivers. Say, these kids are so excited about coming to the Fargo Dome to play for a state championship that Linton shows up about, oh, I suppose, 9 30 this morning. First thing the kids do is run into the locker room, put on their workout stuff, and come out here, and they start playing football. I mean, it's, it's like a big backyard football game on the Fargo Dome floor. First and 10, Jokum up the middle. Irie grabs onto the ankles, but not before Jokum gains about eight. Meanwhile, our guys are kicking field goals. 
<laughs> Central Valley, by the way, electing not to stay overnight in Fargo. They practiced here yesterday for an hour, went back home, and I asked Randy Vegan about that. He said, well, no matter where they sleep, they're going to be nervous. They might as well be nervous in their own beds. <laughs> Third down and two, Jangula the first down. Sundin, Bierke making the tackle for the Valiants. So the chains keep moving for the Lion Tigers, but so does the clock. Eight fifty-seven to go in the ball game. Jangula pressured, and that causes that screen pass to fall incomplete, intended for Jokum. And the big senior, two hundred fourteen-pound Billy Ledigi, leading the rush. And by the way, the pregame high by our production crew was a 38-yard field goal. <laughs> it barely cleared. Those of you taking notes. <laughs> Jangula gets it off. Tipped. Picked off by Kyle Irie. Man, oh, man. And once again... Bill Ledigy coming in from the left side of the line to force that throw. Lonnie Olson got a hand on it, and guess who? <laughs> Fourth interception of the day. What a game for Kyle Irie. And now you know why in football practice, coaches always practice the tip drill. Irie has come up with a couple of INTs on tip balls. Irie can't get the playoff. Flags fly. And it's offside against Central Valley. Irie had six interceptions coming into this game. He's got four already. Six INTs, one fumble recovery, 61 solo tackles. And no wonder he says the Fargo Dome is hot. He never, he never takes a break. Showland on the little counter. He's got a big hole. Dustin Kurtz horse collars him at the 44-yard line. And if not for Kurtz, that would have been six more, I think. Sholin, just a junior, his first year as a starter. 141 carries this year, 723 yards and 11 touchdowns. And Irie will bring the boys in blue up again. Sholin, right tackle, gain of one, maybe two. Brian Bumgartner from his linebacker stop, making the play for Linton. Linton runs an eagle defense. Coach Imdike says he picked it up from Leo Ringy, former defensive coordinator at North Dakota State, now employed by Fargo Catholic School Systems and Shanley High School. Sholin sneaks through. Kurtz brings him down at the 33, but first down yardage for the Valiants. Twice in three plays, Kurtz has saved a possible touchdown. He just bounced off the pile. Turned sideways to go yeah. through that hole. <laughs> and look at the stiff arm there, but can't quite break the tackle of Kurtz. This is all Central Valley wants to do now. 7.08 remaining and counting. Linton has all three of its timeouts remaining, but Central Valley will be content to eat up that clock. Sholin over the right side, not much doing. Well, they got a flag here. 
Justin Jokum threw a player to the ground, Ryan Jensen, after the whistle. Kyle Lowry tying a Dakota Bowl record today with four interceptions. He's got three touchdowns to go with those. One on an interception return and two on the ground. The record held by a Scott Kopp of Flasher Carson set back in 1993, the first year of the Dakota Bowl. And he's probably pretty close to breaking the record of most pass interception yards held by Cale Lewis of Sergeant Central. 80. That was set back in 1993 as well. First and 10, Olsen. Not much. Well, Randy Vegan had a great quote after last week's semifinal win over New Rockford Cheyenne. He said, Big players make plays in big games, and Kyle Irie is tough when he's on. Today, he made the big plays, and he is definitely on. Coming back from a broken arm in the semifinal loss last year. And another flag. Failure to wear required equipment. There's oh, a sorry. signal. <laughs> There's a signal we don't see too often. You know, they were talking to one of the Valiants, and I kind of assumed it might be a mouth guard. Maybe it was Irie. The cool thing now is to put the mouth guard somewhere in your mask, and he may not have taken it back out of the mask and put it in his mouth. Irie will go to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Danny Sholin. Central Valley figures to heck with running out the clock. Let's put this one away. And oddly enough, the first touchdown pass of the game. 18-yarder to Sholin. The two-point conversion attempt. Irie. Foot race to the corner. No. He couldn't quite get to the pylon. But Central Valley tacks on six more with 529 to play in the nine-man title game. Valiants leading 40 to 16. It's the end of the week. Get into Subway on Sunday. Sunday at Subway, enjoy two regular foot-long sandwiches for only $6.99. Craving steak and cheese, seafood, spicy meatball, or zesty chicken? Subway piles the fixin's high. All day Sunday, get any two regular footlong sandwiches, just $6.99. Sunday dinner's got a whole new feel with Subway footlong deals. All day Sunday, only at Subway. Prices and participation may vary. Life is a journey. Every day we encounter something new, something familiar, something obscure. Who will lead you down your path? I-29 provides local internet access to the world for as low as $10.95 a month. Get started on your journey to the future with I-29. I-29, your easy on-ramp to the internet. Central Valley is five and a half minutes away from celebrating its first ever nine-man football championship. Valiant's leading the Lion Tigers by a score of 40 to 16, and here's the last TD by the Valiants. Every going across the grain had, Sholin had a step on his man. Sholin has only caught 11 passes, and I think that's his first touchdown reception of the year. Uh, for Irie, that is his eighth touchdown pass of the year. Ledigy 
is kicked fielded by Kuhn at the four yard line. Out across the 20 to the 21 yard line. Clinton has a man hurt, Lee Nagel. Back at the seven yard line. Lee Nagel cannot get up. Junior lineman on offense and linebacker on defense. I didn't see what happened to him. Now up, walking off. Good sign. Have had the wind knocked out of him, or dinged a little bit. Here's a ground level shot of the TD, and this is just pretty touch put on by Kyle Irie, right over the DB to Danny Sholin, throwing off his back foot. Got a strong arm. Lion Tigers on offense. 521 to play. Jangula across the middle, thrown behind Huber. And guess who was covering? <laughs> Kyle Irie. That stops the clock with 516 to go. Still ahead today on the ABC Dakota Sports Network, the Class A championship game between Stanley and Carrington. Stanley here a year ago, but lost to a pretty inspired Harvey team. Blue Jays back for another shot. J.J. Kuhn on the reverse, breaks some tackles across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Sundin. And Ledigy make the stop. Boy, Billy Le uh, Ledigy has played a very good football game today. Small victory for Linton. Five minutes to go. Tigers just want to, the Lion Tigers, excuse me, want to just go out with some respectability here in the closing minutes of their season. Angela will throw and go deep. Underthrown. Bobbled. Intercepted. Novacek at the 50. The 40. Finally brought down at about the 36-yard line by Olhauser, and a flag comes in late. couldn't pick that ball off. I was going to say, that's the one he didn't get today. He caused it, though. Although he was there in the vicinity. The lefty lets it go, and you see Irie with a bead on it. It bounces off him, and right there is Darren Novacek. Now it's back the other way. And look at Irie still looking for somebody to block. Meanwhile, the zigging and zagging gets Novacek some pretty good yardage, but this one is coming back after that penalty flag was thrown. Flag is on the Valiants. It will back Central Valley up, and we're going to see a whole bunch of new kids for the Valiants. Andy Olson is your quarterback. He's a five foot seven junior. This is number 32, Jerry Olson, getting some work at tailback. Pickup of about nine to the far side of the football field. And now we're going deep into the roster. And another Linton player slow to get up there. Limping off is Ryan Baumgartner, number 25, a junior linebacker. Now you think this is mop-up duty, but to these players on the field, this means the world to them. Oh, 10 years from now, 25 years from now, this yep. will be their big <laughs> story. Tyler Severson. <laughs> Five foot, 88 pounds. Throw it to him. Freshman. Olsen, <laughs> left side. 
Down to the 41. That should be enough for a first down. Now these kids work all year long. They practice every day. And to get a chance to play in the state championship game on statewide television. And on satellite. And on satellite, <laughs> yeah. Picked up by alumni across the country. <laughs> <laughs> There's the 88 pounder. He's my main man. <laughs> Olsen, nice one-handed grab on the pitch. But can't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. Chris Noel making the stop for the Lion Tigers. Well, a tough way for Litton, Hazelton, Moffat, Braddock to go out. And Coach Jim Dyke said yesterday, you, you hate to see it end. He just cherishes every additional week he, he got to play. He says, I'm a lucky guy to have the job, and as long as it's important to the kids, he's going to love it. He has to love it to stay with it 23 years. Penalty here. Offside against Central Valley, back it up five. But... Give Linton credit, five shutouts, 10 wins, only two losses. And tip your hat to Central Valley, the first state championship in school history, two minutes and 38 seconds away. Fumble. Fumble. Loose ball at the 50 yard line. There's a scrap for it. They're still fighting for it. Huber comes up with a ball and it is. Linton football. So a three correction, 2.32 to play. The Lions go back on offense. First Central Valley turnover coming in the final two and a half minutes, man. And the big seven on the board for Linton there. And that makes the difference today. And this play is being stopped. With so many new defenders in for Central Valley, they needed to take a timeout to get straightened away. We'll take a break. 2.32 to play in the nine-man title game. The celebration is yet to come. a new Cherokee Sport at your Jeep dealer for just $2.79 a month and get all this at no extra charge. Did you know there's a cash machine near you? Now, get cash fast and easy with the convenient ATM cash machine at your nearby Stop and Go. It's not only easy, it's also safe, secure, and inside a well-lighted Stop and Go store. Anytime, 24 hours a day. So when you need cash, just remember your nearby safe, secure, designated Stop and Go ATM cash machine store. Well, lead, leading up to this football game, Andy Rorick wearing number 70 there. He's a 105-pound freshman. Was reminding Coach Imdike that at the beginning of the year, Coach, remember you said if we make it to the state title game, you'll let me play. He's got two and a half minutes to see if Coach Imdike can remember that conversation. Dan says he doesn't. <laughs> he said a week didn't go by. The young man didn't remind me of that. I say we watch Rorick and Severson go head-to-head -head on the outside. <laughs> but look at him. He's standing in the back row, tiptoes, leaning over everybody, trying to see every play in the state title game. This is number 23, Brad Prouse, a sophomore running back for Linton, carrying the football. And we're inside the two-minute mark. Chris Shervey, a senior, making that tackle, number 61. Chance for him to get some playing time in the state championship, his final high school game. 
Shervey shaking off the uh, block attempt there by Scott Martin. Linton is satisfied just to run this clock out and give some valuable experience to some younger players. And go back home and say, I played in a state championship game. Number 48, Leo Kuntz carrying the ball that time. And oh. there is Coach Viggs getting a hug from his daughter. And looks like he got the, <laughs> the ice buckets emptied over him. Fourth down and one. QB sneak, first down for the Lion Tigers. Brent Weber, the backup quarterback. <laughs> Central Valley coaches mopping ice cubes off of the uh, field here on the near side. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, there's a fine for water spilled or for dousing a coach. The Fargo Dome officials trying to keep the, you know, the field playable for the next game. I say let him have some fun. Sure. Weber wants to throw. Bobbled but complete to number 81, Brian Nelson. Down to There's the 10-yard line. Who makes the stop? <laughs> number seven, Tyler Severson. He's in the stat book. <laughs> what? It's not size, it's heart. What? Look at him, he's high-fiving everybody. Yeah, what mismatch. I saved the TD, boys. You're lucky I'm back here. Let me see. Oh, life is good. Oh, that boy, that turf hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler stealing the show here in the final minute. 14 seconds to go. Weber wants to throw again. He's going to turn it up and run this time. Weber flies into the end zone for a Lion Tiger touchdown. And look at the hop in his step. You can't tell me that it's not, it's a meaningless touchdown to Brent Weber. Sophomore quarterback, he uh, looked like he wanted to throw, but there was so much room there, he thought, I'm gonna go for it. And he dives in to make it and give the Lion Tigers something to smile about here as they end their season. 13, or 11 yards on that. Touchdown run. Look who's in the ball game. There he is. Number and 70, Andy Rorick. And a 105 pound freshman. You gotta throw to the young man. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's not all about winning and losing in high school athletics, it's about participating. And they had a delay a game here, and that'll move it back to the eighth. And now Rorick's got to come off the field. Thank you. To the end zone. The two-point conversion is good to Brian Nelson. The pass from number 88, Steve Weber, a freshman quarterback. And the Lion Tigers convert the two. And Central Valley now just waiting. 6.6 .6 seconds to celebrate. And old Andy Rorick is not going to be very far away from the coach. He wants on the field. He wants to be a part of this kickoff coverage. And I credit Dan Imdike for allowing this to, to happen. And Coach Began for, for playing people late in the game. Most coaches will agree they are first and foremost teachers of young men. Coming up next, Class A, Carrington and Stanley, so stay with us. Tomorrow we're back on at noon with the double-A game, Lisbon and Minot Ryan, followed by triple-A, West Fargo and Minot. We're on at a reasonable hour this year. Last year, I think, with the Saturday uh, games were starting early because the Bison had a home game, but that's not the case tomorrow. Nelson kicks it away. 
Ball is bobbled by Dustin Irie, but finally scooped up by Olsen. And he gets to the 35, but the clock is off oh, a tenth oh. of a second from being <laughs> complete zeros. <laughs> One tenth of a second <laughs> left. They wanted to rush the field, and now they had to pull them back. So the Valiants will make one more snap in the 99th season before the championship trophy can be carried above heads and shoulders on the Fargo Dome floor. Andy Olson will take an E to make Central Valley your 1999 nine-man football champion in the state of North Dakota. about this moment it has come true and I guarantee you that football will not leave his hands a lot of good coaches in this business never realized the state championship and I bet there were times coach vegan thought he never would but on November 12, 1999, the Valiants make Coach Vegan a champion. Let's go down to Steve Hallstrom. Steve? Well, guys, a special day for Coach Randy Vegan. Randy, 25 years at this business. A special day. You have your daughter on the sidelines to give you a hug as it's winding down. Just tell me what's going through your mind. Well, I, I can't right now. The emotions are just, th this group of seniors have been so unbelievable, and we're so proud of them. Again, it's sort of ironic. In 1992-93 basketball season, we lost our football in the 92, you know, uh, I think the third round of the playoffs, and they come back and won a state title, their first appearance in the basketball state, and all of a sudden, here, this is our first trip, and we won it. And I can't imagine uh, how much better feeling a person could have. We're just so proud. We're so proud of our community and the support they've given us for our football program. And it just pays, I guess, uh, if you stick with things long enough, uh, the good things will happen. And uh, Coach Cleveland, my offensive coordinator, has been with me the whole, the whole time. And again, I really appreciate his work. And hey, what a way for us to end a football season. Your team has made a living off of big plays all year, and that certainly spelled the difference here today. Oh, well, absolutely. It was a good defensive effort. We give up that first touchdown, and, you know, we just told the kids, you know, uh, state titles are not one-on-one -on -one, uh, series or two series. It's, it's whatever you come up with as far as your heart. And the kids really did buckle down and play pretty good defense. Early in the game, you get down right away. Uh, they mount an impressive drive against you. It shows a little bit about the character of your team not to get down and keep believing. Well, absolutely, and we talked about that. You know, this is a long game. Game, four quarters of football and if you get down you just have to again believe in yourselves and get things going and give the coaches and players some chances to make adjustments and that's what we were able to do today coach there's a lot of fun going on behind you go and enjoy it well, thank you and thanks for the coverage it's been great we're, we're gonna sit you know really enjoy this one thanks very good randy Viggin, you can't say too much about him guys what a great day for him in this program Central Valley's got the nine-man hardware. Well, there was just one regular season loss for Central Valley this year. That was to AEEMO. They avenge that loss in the postseason and then roll to a nine-man championship. The Valiants beat the Linton Lion Tigers by a score of 40 to 24. Clear the game. Oh, gee, I wonder. Let's go down to Steve Halster. <laughs> Steve? Guys, there are some players that will have a memory or two to take from this game. This guy to my right will have a whole bucket full of them. Kyle, could you have imagined that this game would go this way for you? No, I, I guess when they scored right away, we had their doubts probably, but I think we just stuck with it. 
You guys ended up winning. A little bit of everything. You ran one in, you threw one, you picked off four. The, the punt that uh, was tipped and you brought that back. Must be a special day. Not only did you do it one phase of the game, but you really showed all of your talents yeah, today. I, I think we all have to show up on both sides because we all play both ways. So I guess we all showed up on both sides. Too. Kyle, what does it mean to win this championship for Coach Began? This is great. I guess he's been like 25 years and he hasn't got here. And to win it is great for him and Mr. Cleveland, too. Where does this day rank in your football memories, Kyle? Uh, this is probably the top. Okay, very good. Nice job today. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks. Kyle Irie, the, really the, the key and the heart and the soul of the Valiants. And right to my right here is another guy who really had a lot to do with today's win. Now, these guys, guys like Billy Leggetty, they don't always get the credit, but this guy was hustling around and played a super game. Billy, just talk about your, the feelings going on in your mind right now. Oh, this is the best feeling I've ever had. This is great. We've waited so long for this, and we just came out and got it done today. Billy, their first drive, Linton takes the ball right down the field on you guys. What are you talking about right at that point? Well, we knew our defense had to step it up this game if we wanted to win. After that first drive, we just put it together and got her done. Do you ever find yourself becoming a fan of Kyle Irie and just watching what he's doing and getting caught up in that? Oh, he's a great player, let me tell you. He's the best player I've ever played with, and he's just awesome. You had a great day, Billy. Just you were, It seemed like you were all over the field. Even late in the fourth quarter, I saw you making over a tackle on this side of the field where you had to chase the quarterback far side. This must be just a great day to know that you played four quarters and you got to do it in such a great atmosphere. Yeah, we knew this for our seniors, this was our last game. We just wanted to come on and give it all we had. You guys have been so close, two straight years to the semis, never to the finals. What does it mean to win it your first time here? Oh, this is awesome. I mean, we never, we thought we could get here, but winning it, it just makes it all the better. And doing it for Coach, uh, Coach Vegan, that must be a special thing for you guys. Yeah, he's a great coach. Him and Cleveland, they're the best. We just wanted to win. That's what we did. Very good. Thanks very much for your time, Billy. Thank nice you. job today. 40 to 24, the final. There's many heroes in this team. Those are just a couple of them. Dana and Pat, back up to you. One champion has been crowned here in the Fargo Dome. We've got three more to go. Two tomorrow, one yet today. Up next, the Class A championship between Stanley and Carrington. But the morning belonged to Central Valley. The Valiants winning the nine-man championship by a score of 40 to 24 over a Linton Lion Tiger team. Back with continuing coverage of Dakota Bowl 99 next on the ABC Dakota Sports Network. This end zone and the actual huddle of today's game. Let's listen in. We want a good game! Yeah! And why do we want a good game? So they can read about us in the forum! Yeah! yeah! What about the option? Yeah! You got the option to buy a single copy! Or have it delivered! Yeah! Let's give them something to read about! Yeah! Sports in the forum. This game looks great on paper. See the future. Feel the sound. Bring it on home. Need a mattress? Cut out the middleman and come to the king. Comfort King, the mattress manufacturer that sells direct to you. Quality materials, workmanship, and experience allows you to buy with confidence direct from the only mattress factory in town. Shop and compare. You'll see the difference. I'm Rich Fenno, manager of our Fargo assembly plant and showroom. Come in and watch your mattress being built and feel the difference of a pillow top mattress. Quality starts with the materials and finishes with your satisfaction. Come to the factory. Come to Comfort King with locations in Fargo on Main Avenue east of 25th and Sioux Falls. Building quality one bed at a time. It's the Bargain Hunter's Paradise, your Goodwill retail store, Fargo. It's clean and friendly with more value, more quality, more selection, and more brand names. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 7, Saturdays, 9 to 6, and Sundays, noon to 6, and even have convenient drive through drop-off service. Your tax-deductible donations are always needed, and proceeds help to train and employ people with disadvantages and disabilities. You'll discover more reasons to shop at your Goodwill retail store, Fargo. Kirsten Keeley, WDAY News.
Welcome back to the Fargo Dome, everyone. We have crowned one champion here at Dakota Bowl 99, the Central Valley Valiants, getting Coach Randy Vegan his first state championship after a great 25-year coaching career. And you got to tip your hat to the Linton team, too. They played awfully hard today and really had this game in hand for the early part. A lot of fun in that first game. A lot of fun to watch Kyle Irie, and he has been named as our American Dairy Player of the Game. Kyle Irie, the outstanding senior quarterback for the Central Valley Valiants, and uh, he picked off four passes today as well, setting a Dakota Bowl record. He did a little bit of everything. He ran a touchdown in, he threw for a touchdown, also returned 